sing of the goodness of God hallelujah because all my life all my life you have been able all my life you have been so so good and every breath that I am able every breath that I am able I will sing of the goodness of God praise the Lord it is wonderful and great when we can sing about the goodness of God what God has done for us you know one songwriter says count your blessings count your blessings count your blessings name them one by one and it will surprise you what the Lord has done so this evening God bless you welcome to our teleconference and we want to thank God for everyone joining us and we just want to give God thanks for you and that you find time out to join us. God bless you. God bless you. And we just want to think about the goodness of God and what he has done for us. He has done great things for us. We're off. We are glad. Praise the Lord. And um, uh, we we'll visit the church in Peckham today. Had a wonderful service down there. And the blessings of Lord of the Lord was there, and we felt the presence of the living God. And nothing can be so good when you enter the temple and the house of God, and you feel the presence of God. Nothing can substitute the presence of God, because David got a vision. David felt the presence of God, and David said, "In the presence of the Lord, there are fullness of joy." glory and at his right hand at his right hand there are pledges forevermore oh praise God you know we need to we need to feel that blessings and the anointing of God when we enter into the house of God the fullness of joy and at his right hand there are pledges forevermore so God bless you tonight we want to go into the, the, the Word of God and um, continuing um, the topic of last week which is topic of faith um, was reading from Hebrews chapter 11 and I read up until verse 11 I'm gonna move on from 11 to 22 we're talking about faith a topic is what how big is your faith in God how big is your faith in God if you could measure your faith if we could measure our faith how big is our faith how much do we trust God how much do we rely on God how much do we lean on God knowing that we are leaning on the everlasting arm how much how much confidence do we put in our God? These are the questions that we want to answer tonight. But before I do this, I'm going to have a short prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you for your goodness, for your mercies, and for your grace. We bless you tonight. We bless you this evening for all that you have done, what you are doing and what you are yet to do for us. We give you praise and we give you glory. Bless us and direct us, go before us, and lead us in the way that you'll have us to go. Inspire our heart with your word and help us to look up to you and to you alone, who is the author and the finisher of our faith. We give you thanks, we give you praise. Bless everyone who joined us tonight. 
and be with us, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So last week we were, thought, we were talking about the faith of the patriots and the prophets. The faith. And we was talking about was talking about faith is the substance as Hebrews chapter eleven started. Faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things which are not seen. So anything that we hope for, whatever it may be, anything that we wish for, anything that we long for, it is in faith. Faith is simply believing, believing in God, that God is able to perform that which we ask of Him. Faith. And faith is also believe in, in the Word of God, that whatever God has said in His Word, He is able to perform and He will perform. That is faith. And every child of God should and must have faith. It is a prerequisite, prerequisite to enter into the presence of God. It is a necessity to have faith, to please God. Because the Bible tells us without faith it is impossible to please God. We should come, when we come to God, we should not doubt Him. Because He that created the heavens, He that created the moon and the stars, He that created the galaxies, numerous galaxies, cannot be numbered. No man can number the amount of galaxies. No man can number the amount of stars in the universe. No man. It is innumerable. It is beyond number. And this, this great God, oh glory be to God, this great God who created everything that we see visible and, in, and invisible, He loves us. He takes us personal. He has a personal eye on us. He cares about us personally. And so we should love Him. We should love this God. So when I continue about faith, now we are going to go into verse 11 of Hebrews chapter 11. We're going to go back into verse 11. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 11 says, Through faith, through faith also Sarah herself received strength to conceive seed. Through faith. Through faith Sarah. Sarah was Abraham's wife. And so they were past the age of, she was past the age of conception. I think she was about 90. And she never thought that she would bear a seed until the angel visited her and told her that she would, be, she would conceive and she would bring, bear a child. She never thought it was possible. Some things about life we never thought and we don't think is possible. But when God says so, we have to just believe it will be so. Even though we never thought it would be possible. But God, God is a God of impossibility. That's why we should love Him. Because the Bible says with God nothing is impossible impossible. He's a specialized, he's specialized in impossibilities. If we even think about Jesus when he was on earth, so many things that he did while he was on earth, no one had thought it would, could happen. 
until Jesus did it. So he's a God of impossibility. And that's why we should love him. Because in his hands, he can give us anything if we have belief in faith. So Sarah now, at the age of that late age in life, never thought she would have a child. But she believed God that she would conceive. And lo and behold, she conceived and bare a son. And this was Isaac, also the heir of the promise. When God says something, just, just believe. That's all we need to do. Because faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things which are not seen. Therefore, God had also made a promise to Abraham. God told Abraham that he would multiply his seed, that his seed would be like the stars in the heaven. He took Abraham outside and he said to Abraham, look up into the heavens. Hallelujah. If you can count the stars. And God said to him, so shall thy seed be as the stars in the sky. Imagine, who can number the stars, as I said earlier? Who can number the stars in the sky? But God promised Abraham that his seed would be like the stars in the sky, innumerable, cannot be numbered. And it went on to say in verse 12, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 12, Therefore sprang there even one, and him as good as dead. So many as the stars in the, of the sky in multitude. That is the promise of God that from the seed of Abraham would come Isaac. Isaac would bring forth Joseph. Isaac would bring forth Jacob. Jacob would bring forth his 12 children. Their children would bring forth children. And their children would bring forth children. And even now, we can say we are of the seed of Abraham. But we are the seed of Abraham. So many as the stars in the sky in multitude. And the sand which is by the seashore innumerable. If God said to Abraham that his seed would be innumerable, that's what it will be, innumerable. Who can count the seed of Abraham? We think there's seven, near seven billion people in the world, but God ain't finished yet. Praise God. God hasn't finished yet. There will be more and there will be more and there will be more. Innumerable. So in, in verse 13, Hebrews chapter 11 verse 13, all these, all, these all died in faith, not receiving the promise. So all these patriots of old, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, their seed, seed, the children of Israel, they all died. They all died, died in faith, not receiving the promise. In other words, they die, but did not go straight to heaven. They await. They were waiting for that time when God shall gather his his seed. They all died in faith, not receiving the promise, but they held it. But having seen the promise, so this is it now, these patriots, having seen the promise, are far off and were persuaded 
and embraced them and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. When we hold on to the promise of God, when we perceive it, when we are persuaded of it, because God has made us a promise. You and I today, God has made a promise. Jesus says, I am gone in my Father's house. There are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I'm going to prepare a place, hallelujah, that where I am, he may be also. That's the promise of God. And even as the patriots and prophets and men of old, having received the promise, we have received the promise. Having seen them afar off, we have seen the promise afar off. And we are persuaded of them. And we embrace the promise of God. And confess. We should also confess, as they did, that we are but strangers and pilgrims of the earth. We are strangers. This world is not our home. And, you know, I was saying to one of my brethren today that we all have to go. We all have to leave this world. Every one of us. There's two ways that we can leave this world. We can either give up the ghost and die and be buried. Or we can go when Jesus comes in the rapture of the church. Two way, but any way it goes, we have to leave. We have to pack up and leave. They confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. The men of old, they all confessed. All the patriots, all the prophets, from Moses, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, going down to uh, all the other prophets like Elijah, Elisha, and those great men and of old, Isaiah, and all those great prophets, Hezekiah, and all those, all those men who loved God and served God. And many were kings. They were kings, but they served God in spirit and truth. They all had confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. For they that say, say such things declare plainly, they that say such things declare plainly that they seek a country. And truly, if they had been mindful of that country from whence they came out, they might have had opportunity to have returned. How? How? When we, when the Lord come into our life and set us free, hallelujah, set us free from the sin, set us free from the devil and his, 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 his grip on us. When Jesus come into our life and loose us, the Bible says, them that the Lord set free are free indeed. When God has delivered us from the hands of the devil and put us on a pathway of righteousness. It says, truly, truly, those men were called out from their life as we were. They were called out. They were called to serve God. They all had the calling of God. And when God called them, it says, of a surety, truly, if they were mindful of where they came from, the country, the life 
style that they came from, they might have had opportunity to return. And so when God called us and we look forward, we don't look back. We don't look back. Forward ever. Backwards never. We don't look back. So that's what, it, so, so that's what the apostle is saying. If they were mindful of where they came from, they would have had opportunity to return. But they know. The Bible says they look for, they seek a country. And today when we are serving God, when we are serving the Lord Jesus, we are seeking a country. We are seeking a city which is maker is God himself. A city that the Bible says they seek a city which had foundation, whose maker and builder is God. We can't be mindful of where God has taken us from, from where we are coming from. We are to look forward to where God is taking us to. Lord, lift me up. The songwriter says, Lord, lift me up and let me stand on heaven's table land, a higher plane than I have known. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. That is our desire. We need to step up. We have to step up in this life. We have to step up because the devil is busy. He's seeking whom he... The Bible says he's like a roaring lion. Seeking whom he may devour. And can you imagine being... Being... In a jungle with roaring lion, how careful you need to be. We need to be, because that's what the devil is: is a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. But we, if we are watchful, if we keep our eyes on Jesus, everything will be well. Let's keep our eyes on Jesus. So. The patriots and prophet desire a better country. That is heavenly. So all those men of old, they desire a better country. The country that desire is a heavenly one, not an earthly one. The better country that the patriots and prophet desire was a heavenly one, not an earthly one. And so I say, this, this world is not our home. So when I say, wherefore God is not ashamed to be, to be called their God, for he has prepared them for them a city. So once we go, once we are serving God, once we humble ourselves, once we are looking to God, once we are giving God our heart, when we are serving God in spirit and in truth, and we are looking for the promise through faith, by faith, of the country, of the city. That is heavenly. God is not ashamed. God is not ashamed to be called our God. Hallelujah. God is not ashamed to be called our God. For he hath prepared for us a city. He has prepared for us a city. So we need to serve God in righteousness. We need to humble ourselves. We need to give our life to Jesus. We need to have faith in God. We need to believe in the Word of God. The Word of God which tells us that we must be born again. 
every man that is born of a woman is born in sin and shaped in iniquity. So as long as we are born, we are born with a sin nature. And so the only way for us to be free from a sin nature is to do what Jesus says, to repent. Repent, he told Nicodemus. He said to Nicodemus, Nicodemus was a ruler of the Jews. Nicodemus came to Jesus by night. Nicodemus said to Jesus, We know thou art a teacher come from God. For no man do these miracles except God be with him. That's what he said to Jesus. Jesus says, unless you are born again, unless a man is born again, he cannot be saved. Nicodemus said to Jesus, how can a man be born again? See, sometimes we look at things on the natural angle and not the spiritual angle. Nicodemus says, can a man enter his mother's womb? Jesus wasn't implicating that he should and we entered his mother's womb. But spiritually, we must be born spiritually again to wash away the sin. Repentance and the baptism, he says, it must be born of the water and of the spirit. The water, baptism, in Jesus' name. And God will bless you with the Holy Ghost. That is the order of the day. He says, without that, no man can enter into the kingdom of God. And we, if we believe God, we have to follow the word of God. We have to follow what Jesus says. We, there's no way around it. So all these men believed God, trust God. It says by, a, by faith, another one, by faith Abraham, when he was tried, offer up Isaac. He that had received the promise offered up his only begotten son. So when God do something for us, it builds our faith. It builds our trust. We know what he can do. So God gave Abraham a son when he was past age. And then God appeared unto Abraham. God said to Abraham, take Isaac, your son, your one son that you love, and offer him a sacrifice unto me upon the mountain. Mount Moab upon the mountain and Abraham knew the voice of God and Abraham did as God had commanded him because he trusted in God he trusted in the true and living God Hallelujah. He trusted in the true and living God. And he went with Isaac upon the mount. And he had the burnt, he had the wood and everything to offer the sacrifice to God. And when he was about to slay his own son, this is how faith is. 
Abraham would have slayed his son because he knew even if he did slay his son, God was able to rise him up again. God was able to rise him up again. So he took his son, laid him on the altar, and was about to raise the knife and was about to slay his son. And the voice says, Abraham, Abraham, lay not your hand upon your son. That's how much faith Abraham in, had in God. Thus Abraham became the father of faith. He was the father of faith. I would like to, someone has got a microphone on. I can hear feedback there. Can you turn your microphone off, please? Can you kindly turn your microphone off? Thank you. Praise the Lord. Of whom it was said that in Isaac shall thy seed be called. So God told Abraham, lay not your hand upon your son. And while when he looked around, there he found there's a lamb waiting to be slaughtered. And so, hallelujah. And so, he took the lamb and slayed the lamb. Praise the name of the Lord. But he had faith in God. He trusted in the living God. Hallelujah. And that is why Abraham is called the father of faith, because he went to the uttermost to please God. And so should we praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. God is good. Trust in him at all times. Trust in the Lord at all times. Lean not on your own understanding. And that the, the Bible says that God told Abraham that in Isaac shall thy seed be called. So that's a promise that God had told Abraham. That in Isaac, the same child that he was supposed to offer on the altar, God said in Isaac shall thy seed be called. So it says accounting that God, so here it says in verse 19 that Abraham was accounting that God was able to raise him up even from the dead from whence he also received him a figure we know that whatever God says he's able to perform it and he's able to deliver and he did deliver Isaac from being slaughtered because Abraham trusted in him. And that's the kind of faith God wants us to have. Faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things which are not seen. Accounting that God was able to raise him up from the dead. What a faith! That God said to you, God says to you, offer your only son. And you believe God so much that you will offer your son. Having believed that even from the dead that God would raise him up. That would, God would reverse that death into life. That's the faith that we need to have. So I start by saying how big, how large. How great is our faith in God? What's the size of our faith in God? I went on to say in verse 20, By faith Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau concerning the things 
to come. Praise the Lord. By faith. By faith. Isaac blessed Jacob, his son, and Esau concerning the things to come. By faith, Jacob, when he was dying, blessed both sons of, jo of Joseph and worshipped leaning on his staff. By faith, Joseph, when he died, made mention of the parting of the children of Israel, gave commandment concerning his bones. By faith, J Joseph, Joseph the one that went down to Egypt, and he was so pleasing that he became Prince of Egypt or the Prime Minister in Egypt. God blessed him in such a wonderful way. But by faith he knew that his God would deliver the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt. He knew, he knew because God had promised. And though they were in the land of bondage, he knew that one day God would deliver his people. He trusted in the Lord. And when he was about to die, when he was to die, he mentioned when the children of Israel were freed from the land of bondage, Egypt, that they should take his bones, hallelujah, carry his bones back to the land of Israel. Praise the Lord, because he knew his God. When we think about the trials that we go through from day to day, every trial that we go through is there to make us stronger. Every testing that we go through is there to build our faith in God. And one songwriter said truly, if we don't have problems, we would never know that God could solve them, which is so true. Sometimes when our faith is tested, it is a good thing. And we should give God thanks. And we should give God glory when God give us the victory. And he promised that he will deliver us in any circumstances. The Bible tells us that God is our refuge and our strength, a very present help in times of trouble. Whenever trouble comes, whatever form it comes, call upon God in faith. Because we need to believe when we call upon God. We need to trust that He will deliver. And if we need healing, we need to believe that He is able to heal. And we must remember that with God, nothing is impossible. Trust in the Lord all the time, see people. Joseph trusted in the Lord. Look how God blessed Joseph. And that's, that's a token of, of faith, how God blessed Joseph, the son of Jacob. When his brother threw him into the pit, and was going to abandon him there to be eaten by wild beasts and whatever could have happened to him while he was in the pit. God sent men to come along there and, and talk to Reuben and Reuben said, why, why leave him? Let's sell him. And they sold him unto the Amorites. They sold their brother. And when they sold him, they took him to Egypt. And there, God miraculously bring Joseph through some trials because he was cast in prison. He was cast in prison because Potiphar's wife told a lie on him. I was cast in prison. 
While he was in prison, there was a baker and a buckler. They both had a dream. And neither of them knew the dream. But God gave Jacob the dream. And he interpreted the dream. I think the butler was to die and the baker, the baker was to die and the buckler was to receive his job. Somewhere in that form. And Joseph said to the buckler, when you come out, when you receive your pardon, remember me. And the butler came out and forgot all about him. Forgot, forgot all about him. But God wanted to get, take Joseph to a higher place. So he gave Pharaoh a dream. And when Pharaoh was troubled, he did not know the meaning of the dream. He didn't even I, he didn't even remember the dream, but he was troubled by the dream. You know, sometimes we have a dream and we can't remember what we dreamt. I think this was the same thing with um, Pharaoh. He had a dream, he didn't remember his dream. And the butler said to Pharaoh, I know a man who can interpret dream. God wanted to bring Joseph out. God wanted to bring Joseph to a higher place. Oh, praise God. So when Pharaoh sent to call Joseph, and Joseph interpreted the dream, the dream mean there was going to be seven days of seven years of plenty and seven years of famine. And by the dream, interpretation of the dream, God used Pharaoh to bless Jacob. Joseph and exalt him in Egypt, make him as a prime minister in Egypt. See how God can bless us. See how God can open doors for us if we trust in him, if we serve him. Imagine being moved from the pit that his brother threw him into. Hallelujah. Brethren, God can do great things for us. They say the Lord has done great things. They say among themselves, the Lord has done great things for us. Whereof we are glad. The Lord has done great things for us. Whereof we are glad. Joseph became next to Pharaoh in Egypt because God, because God made it so. God is good. He can do it for me. He can do it for you. He can do it for any one of us. He can take us to the highest height. Oh, praise God. He can take us to the deepest depth. Praise the name of the Lord. Our God is great. If we trust Him, if we believe Him, if we serve Him, if we humble ourselves before the Almighty God, He will lift us up. Just as He did for many of the patriots and the prophets of old. They didn't get where they were without trusting in God, without relying on God, without believing God, without casting all their cares upon Him, all their hopes upon Him, all their aspiration was upon him. They trusted in God. And God has blessed them. And that's why we can talk about these men of old. Because they went forward trusting in the Lord. They did not look back. The Bible says if they were mindful of where they came from. If we are mindful of where we come from. Oh, there's a big open door to go back there. There's a big road to go back there where we come from. But we can't be mindful of where we're coming from. We need to look. 
Paul the Apostle says, I press towards the mark, hallelujah, of the high calling in Jesus. We have to press towards the high call, towards the mark of the high call, which is in Jesus. It doesn't come without pressing. It doesn't come without trials. It, don't, it doesn't come without testing. It doesn't come without, you know, going through some sort of challenges in our Christian life. It doesn't come without it. All the men of old have been through it, but they trusted in God and God brought them out. Tell you about Elijah and about Elisha, those prophets who proved God. Tell you about, you know, Moses, how God used him. The Bible says Moses realized that himself was a Hebrew. He was not content to be the daughter, the son of Pharaoh's daughter. But the Bible says he chose rather to suffer affliction with the people of God. He chose to suffer affliction with the people of God. When we see what's going on in the world, it seems like everybody wants to have to be rich. This is a world where everybody wants to be rich if they don't want to be rich they want to be famous or something but all those things will pass away everything will pass away all that we work for and that we achieve will pass away but if we stand upon the word of God if we stand on the promises of God, we will not fail. We will be like the man that built his house upon the rock. Jesus spoke the parable of the man that built his house upon the rock. And the storm and the wind came and it had foundation because it was built upon the rock but the man who built his house upon the sand when we build our house upon the sun is when we believe in ourselves we believe we sustain ourselves we believe that all that we have achieved in life is by our good works our hard work and we believe in ourselves. When we believe too much in ourselves, we are building our house upon the sand. We have to realize that whatever it is that we achieve in life, it is by the hand of Almighty God. It is by the hand of the Almighty God. Nebuchadnezzar built the city of Babylon was a marvelous metropolis, marvelous, marvelous work of art and greatness. But Nebuchadnezzar didn't realize that it was God who gave him the knowledge and the wit to build it. And the Bible says he boasted. It's never good to boast. It's never good to boast. The Bible says, somewhere it says, Forbid it, Lord, that I should boast, except in the cross of Christ my Lord. It's never good to boast. But Nebuchadnezzar built the city of Babylon and he boast. He said, Is this the Babylon which I created with my own hands? Oh, praise God. He did not give glory to God. And if we know what happened to Nebuchadnezzar, 
how he went out into the field and lived like an animal out there until his nails became like claws. The king of Babylon, Nebuchadnezzar, he went out in the field and lived in the field because he did not give glory to God until he came to the realization that it was God and he confessed that it was God who gave him the knowledge and the power to do what he did. You must always remember the power of our God. Praise the name of the Lord. How great is our God. How great is his name. He is the only one now always the same. He rolled back the water of the mighty Red Sea. He said, I will lead you, only trust in me. Brethren, let us be faithful. Let us trust in the Lord. Let us trust in the Lord at all times. And let us not lean on our own understanding, but let us lean on Jesus. God bless you all. We come to the end of our teleconference. God bless you. I see Pastor Winston there. I see my daily on there as well, PT. God bless you. And God bless you all. Thank you for joining us. We give God thanks for you. And let us continue to be faithful. Let us continue to trust in God. Brethren, God is real. God is real. And we need to have a closer walk with Him every day. We need to have a closer walk with Him every day. Pastor Winston, God bless you. Young Delian, God bless you. Everyone else, God bless you all. I'm coming to the, I'm going to close out now. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. P.T., God bless you. I'm closed with prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, I give you thanks. I give you praise. I give you glory. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your mercies. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your grace. Thank you, Lord God, for what you've done for us, what you're doing for us, what you're yet to do. Continue your loving kindness and your tender mercies towards us. Guide and protect us through the course of this week. Help us to continue to give you the praise and the glory and the honor that is due unto your holy name. I give you thanks, give you praise, give you glory.